Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally back. It's been far too long. Hope you all are doing great these days. We are back for another WR reaction video. And this is for the 2009 world records. These are the current records as of the end of 2009, December 31st. And it was really nostalgic and really cool to see where everything started in 2008. I will tell you, I have a lot of bias because I've been around since the entire time, since 2008 in the scene. But 2009 has a place in my heart. Um, I regard it as probably one of the most epic and hype years for a lot of good reasons. So I'm going to discuss a lot of cool storylines and just seeing what the contrast is from the first year in 2008. So um, 2009 here, um, LC, we had a lot of trading of the hands here. Uh, French player Rom did wonderful here, getting a couple of records. Pierpont was still in the mix. Uh, Bubbles got a random record out of nowhere too. Um, I believe J-Boy also got a record during this year. Um, I think the end of 08 was like 0.6. I want to say this is a lower 0.4. So um, nothing significantly really changed here. Just a bit more crisp on the shroom, I would say. That's where you burn most of your time, uh, at least in the first couple of years here. Uh, with things being developed before the whole wheelie shroom strat and getting all the chain wheelies in later years. But uh, shout outs to Ron for sure. Um, Moo Meadows had a lot more going on. Um, this is Wasa, uh, 116-322. And I feel like 2009 era of Moo Meadows was like Veyu driving it down and then Wasa coming along. It was between Wasa and Veyu going back and forth. Um, shooting this all the way down from the high 116s to a really low uh, 116 to be honest um i forget because i believe chaos uh, american player chaos had the, the world record here um with the 116.1 i believe um but i don't remember if he got it before like in this point three point four range or whatever um regardless though i believe they eventually kind of phased out and wasa took the torch here um, and really just sent this to a whole different um, standard of driving. To be honest, this is very impressive for only 2009. Keep that in mind. Like, these last turns here were quite comical watching this back right now. Like, this time here could have been probably like a 116.1 with just some simple spamming, good last turn, all three laps, you know. But, um, yeah, I just remember Veyu and Wasa going back and forth. That was just so memorable. One of the most memorable roll record exchanges in the entire America Re timeline for sure. So this was a treat to watch 100%. Um, coming up, uh, also, by the way, I do have my Chrome tab here because like I, I'm i impartial to 2009. It's one of the greatest eras of Mario Kart Wii roll record scene. But there's just so many things I don't want to forget but it's probably too much to jam pack in one time here in the video, but I'll do my best for sure. Mushroom Gorge, both categories. So this is the no glitch category, obviously. And believe it or not, Kiki, apart from being on Rainbow Road with a cart, uh, also had his time to shine on Mushroom Gorge uh, for a bit of time. Um, I believe during this year, Kiki, I, I don't think Wyvern had it yet. He was contending too. I was trying to get the record back then. Let's see, Mushroom Gorge 09. Let's take a look at this. No, that is the glitch. Wait, hold on. Where's the no shortcut chart? Oh, here we go. Sorry, I'm a professional YouTuber, by the way. <laughs> uh, yes, we had Soldier. Shout out to Soldier, man. My old clan made an evil. Um, Wyvern did have an 09 as well. Yep, yep. Yeah, so it was the, the Kiki, Wyvern, and Soldier Show for Mushroom Gorge for 2009. And to be honest, a mid-143 is, is still fairly solid. Um, I just love the way that they're doing the mushroom. <laughs> it's like, what's going on, man? Like, you're you're like, you're hop, like you're shrooming and then hopping. And the, uh, I don't know. That, that whole sequence is just so funny just watching this back, man. Oh, my gosh. I mean... It's funny now because we're like, what, 14 years removed or whatever, you know? But um, no, the, I feel like it was like 2009 where people were focusing a bit more on the, the no glitch categories. Um, and so 
I think in 2010 is where we saw some pretty heftier improvements than 2009. But even still, I still love watching that. I, I, I can't believe that was a shroom strat, to be honest. Like, I, I recorded this a couple of days ago, and I try not to... Um, to watch too much to like pre-spoil myself for reacting these from how long ago has been but uh even still here we are now on the glitch category and we have jorge aka mario and the battles here were very memorable uh japanese player dark and also jorge eventually coming around and this is pre using the quacker there's no cookie strat there's no turn 15 times twirling on the rock strat from where it is now this is just humble Daisy Mock, tried and true. This strap was always so tricky because if you go like a little bit low on the rock or you just mess up this whole maneuver here, the whole checkpoints aren't right. Your lap doesn't count. It's very frustrating. So this was really strong when it was made. And to be honest, like that's, this is still good for what the strats were being used at the time. So um shout out to jorge this was one of his best times he said for the time period for sure so that very very impressive this is one of my personal favorites here brendan shout out to you man another old clanmate of mine uh toad's factory oh man 2009 toad's factory era this was the year of brendan and japanese player sro going back and forth they tied world records at least once uh we discovered low jumping on the ending low instead of just like just hopping on it and delay tricking. Um, what you see now and today in today's era, you hop, the double hop for it. But just watch what the original strat was. Look at this. You literally wait and you time the hop trick. Now, it looks simple. That way is infinitely more frustrating um i was fairly high in the charts myself on toast factory in 09 i was third or fourth or something and i just remember like when this low jump was discovered it was a mad frenzy on the charts to improve times and trying to trade hands here uh spanish player kraken i believe got the record here at least once i think once or twice uh shout outs to him um but a lot of 09 was just Sro and Brendan trading hands back and forth and watching Mindscarf's uploads were always so memorable and so iconic at the time. Um, Cause it was like each day logging on, it's like, oh man, like Sro be Brendan and Brendan be it back and oh my God, they're tied or whatever. So um, th this track in particular, is just so memorable for all the exchanges that were happening and adapting to the strats and really like a low 151 for these strats in 2009 is so impressive. I cannot say that enough. So it, it's very charming to see that the old strat of just purely hopping with the ramp instead of the double hop and everything. So shout out to Brendan, shout out to Stro, Kraken, etc. Um, Toast Factory, always very memorable for sure, 100%. Moving on, we have Mary Circuit, no glitch. Uh, the glitch was not discovered yet in 2009. Uh, shout out to Camo. Um, I believe though the first 121 in 2009 was by Cole. Um, and I think Cole just went crazy just hunting for the first 121. This is pre uh, using the ramp there behind the chain chop and everything. Um, but eventually it was trading hands with Camo as well. And we land on this time here, the 121.99. And this record, it, it lasted close to a year. And truthfully, like that, that was a rare occurrence in the very first two years of the game. Uh, back when the most amount of players are physically playing the game, they're competing. Uh, the strats are overturning so frequently. So the likelihood of a record lasting even longer than a month or two wasn't that common. So even like a two or three month world record was considered like really strong for the time. This st stood for at least 200 plus days. I, if I remember correctly looking at this, let me consult my handy little Google over here, AKA MKWRS.com. Let me see, let me see. Da, 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 da. I lost my tab here. What's going on here? Professional YouTuber, by the way, let's see. Uh, here we go. 
I'm looking. I'm looking. 241 days. Yeah. So, like, three-fourths of the year, practically. So, shout-out to Camo. That 2009 was just a year of getting the 121 and optimizing from there. You know. Another very memorable track in 09 was Coconut Ball. We had Bubbles. We had Yasha. Yes, it's Yasha, not Jasha. That's the correct pronunciation. And Japanese player, Sro. This was so cool because a lot of the strats were changing and especially how you handle lap three. If you remember watching the 2008 reaction, lap three, you literally just drift on the left uh, escalator set. Uh, credits to me because I changed the strat here, believe it or not. This hopping thing you do here on lap two, um, just on the beefier part of it, um, you would do it for the fast lap, and I started doing it not for the fast lap, using three mushrooms in one lap, I mean. And eventually, it just went out to be so much faster. And um, I didn't get the record in time with the strat. I got third worldwide a couple of times. But I believe Bubbles was the first one to use it in a roll record run. And then the time just started shooting down way more. And eventually, uh, Sro got like a 157.7 at some point too. Uh, Sro got a lot of different tracks under his belt during this time in 2009 as well. Um, but Yasha was always there just to adopt to at all the strats and come out with a much faster time than everyone else. And again, I'm gonna say this a lot of times, but the strats that are used in this run in 2009, extremely impressive. It, Yasha in particular, I feel like he had just a deeper understanding of the game's mechanics way early on. And I really think he's one of the most underrated players in our timeline. And I really wish he would have fully applied himself to see how far he would have gone on all the tracks. Regardless though, um, this is still really cool to watch. The, the Coconut Mall battles were always so fun to watch. And especially in years in, uh, in the future, as we know, the strats get overhauled way more as well. DK Summit had his awesome battles as well. Shoutouts to Ethan, AKA Hahei. Uh, this was the year he finally pulled through for his for first world record here. Um, you also had Wyvern. We had Japanese player Artemis as well, um, throwing their hands into the mix. Um, the battles here were also extremely memorable. Uh, Hahi was the first one to get a 149 here, so shout outs to him. Um, I don't think Blake... Did Blake get the record in 09? No, I think it was... I think it was 2012. Let's see. I forget. What's the 2012 when Blake finally got the WR here? Let's see. I have a good memory of was. Yep. So Blake wasn't into the mix as of yet. But even still, we still had Dan, Artemis, Wyvern, Hahe. And um, I just remember like me racing back then on this track. Uh, I could not wrap my mind around how you drive fast here. Like... I, I was just aimlessly getting like high 37s, nothing really useful, you know? Um, but it's really all in the speed of how you do the cut, your momentum that you're preserving, and the little dips, the little divots on the zipper at the end. Um, that I couldn't figure out. I could do that on Waluigi Stadium, but not here for whatever reason, I don't know. But um, in any event though, um, this is still extremely impressive that they got this type of time in 2009 um and this is just pure way of playing summit man i mean there's no cr crazy jimmy strat discover where you just spin drift off and hop off the thing or whatever and save like two seconds or however much you save from that i don't know but um still this was really solid solid for what the strats were at the time and um i, I remember just being very happy for ethan for finally pulling it through as well uh, in the mix here after all that time. So shout out to all the fellows that were competing on DK Summit at the time. Now we come to Goldmine, one of my personal favorites. And 2009, oh man. This record right here is the very first record that lasted over one year's time. And Stroh set this at the very beginning, January of 2009. 
Keep this in mind, folks. This driving is January of 2009. I still cannot wrap my mind around this run. One, the fact he drove it during the time. But two, the fact that the timing was perfect. He set this run. The following day, the track was glitched. The reason why that sequence is so important is because on the official Nintendo leaderboards on this game, uh, natively on the console, Nintendo didn't make their own glitch and no glitch leaderboards. Preserving ghost data in history became a giant chore. Shoutouts to CTGP today, Mr. Bean Chatters. We appreciate you very much for the ghost database because Literally, if someone didn't download this ghost data in time, this precious record would have been gone forever. So, um, the fact that we can even watch this back right now is amazing. And, um, yeah, this lasted for well over a year. And this, this, this is still so immensely strong for the strats that he used. I, I cannot believe... It was only like, what, eight months since the game came out and he set this run in less than a year of the game being out. Like, people will struggle to beat this time today, folks, just so you know. Even with some updated strats now. And this dude gets in the first eight months, so. Shout out to Sparrow, man. This will always be one of the most craziest records ever set in the game's history, by far. So, um, yeah, it's just really remarkable to watch that back again. Speaking of the, gl the glitch now, it came in 2009. Shout out to Mr. Bean as well. We have Mr. Bean, we have Poyo doing the first three for three pipe bounce. We have Sphinx in the, ming in the mix, uh, Kiki, Jimbo, uh, and now McGrarren here with 34.4. And um, oh my gosh, this was one of the most just memorable times for just a new track being glitched. Um, just from the proof of concept that Mr. Bean had to it actually working and then the pipe bounce being discovered. Oh my gosh, because it was a respawn strat first before the pipe bounce. And once the pipe bounce was discovered, oh my gosh, it, it, it was something else that everyone's scrambling to try and learn the strat. So shout out to McRaren and everyone I mentioned before. This was one of the most memorable moments in 2009 Mario Kirby for sure. Here we go. Daisy Circuit. We got Veyu here, the first 129, got a sub 130 in 2009. And uh, at least in modern day now, we actually use Daisy and Mock Bike when racing this track. And um, I forget the exact time when the stair dive was discovered, but um, at one point in time, you would simply just wheelie off the ramp and do absolutely nothing. However, if you time a precise hop, you land on the ledge that the stairs, I guess, end at, and you're propelled forward with a momentum trick, and it's called a stair dive, and it saves a lot of time. So, um, so with that in mind, I don't think the Daisy Mock Bike switch happened until 2014? That can't be right. Let's see. When did that happen? Uh, no, it was 2010 because of Nobuo. Oh my gosh. The the world record history is botched here for a while during this time period because uh, Mander ended up being a cheater, tasking his times. So people retroactively got WRs on their sheet and this track was really screwed over because Mander had a cheated three for three stair dive run. And so um, the roll record history here is still um, just a little bit weird during that time period. But even still, they got a two for three stair dive run, got the first 129. Um, I think Veyu came into the scene on this track late 08 or early 2009, around there. So uh, shout out to Veyu uh, for a daisy circuit. Koopa Cape will always be one of the most coolest tracks. I feel like this and Coconut Mall has had the most infinite amount of strat changes. Um, and Aubrey was always adapting all the time when Aubrey was an active player. Shout out to Aubrey here. Um, 
Cole did a lot of innovations for this track in particular. And he too had, oh my God, he would do this. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, I forgot that's the shroom he would do. And that's the shroom was, oh my God. Oh, this is so charming, man. I, I, as I said, when I record these times, I try not to look at the screen when it's recording, only when it's over, just so I can get a fresh view again. Oh my, I, I cannot believe we would shroom there. Oh my gosh. It was Cole, I believe. He uh, made the strat change where you shroom at the ramp there. Oh, th this is crazy, man. Oh my gosh. I, I can't believe that. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe that was the strat, man. Oh my gosh. And the fact that WRs were made with this. Because here's the thing, like that was like a, a, a fast lap shroom strat you know like that shouldn't be taken seriously but it ended up being okay for the time you know um it's also a peak hilarity that um you're seeing the old way of the shroomless cut where you cut almost nothing off and now like you go by the rock and you cut like a whole big thing or whatever you know but um this is just so charming. I, I, I am very enthused right now. Hope all of you all are as well watching this at home. Oh my gosh. Here's the thing. This was annoying because you have to kind of like cut your momentum with the grass just so you're not going to be flying in the air like that. Uh, but he lost so much time with that. Oh my gosh. Um, oh man. Oh, oh my gosh. I feel like we could just do like a giant mega reaction just to Koopa Cape and Coconut Mall and other tracks of just like the strats through the years, you know, that'd be a lot of fun to do. Um, but yeah, we had Cole and Aubrey mostly in the mix uh, during this uh, year of 2009 with all these strat changes coming about. Um, and the strat changes wouldn't end here. 2010 was huge as well for Koopa Cape. It just kept on going on and on. So um, chats to Aubrey and Cole for this because th this was such a treat to react to this for sure. So we get to this track and you might, you know, you might recognize the name there, fellas. This hasn't happened yet on this channel. I've done these roll record type of videos for years and I've never been in one. This just so happens to be a time where I am in one. Oh man, this was my first world record I ever set in Mario Kart Wii, November 22nd, 2009. So 2009, Shuto had his time still. I believe it was French player Luna who dethroned uh, Shuto. Then Japanese player Zeno came onto the scene, took the throne from Luna. And I just remember this was always my favorite track, even being a casual player in 2008. And I would always race Shuto's Ghost. I was mimicking his driving style. I got very high on tops pretty quick. And it was always just a fleeting dream. Can I be good enough? Can I surpass and just cement my time in history and to become the best at something in this game? And um, I really pushed myself a lot here. And shout outs to Cole. Uh, my old clan mate, Cole the Legend. I asked him, and back when he could actually do a YouTube DM, 2009 vibes here, and I asked him for advice to get a world record because I was struggling here. I really wanted to get it, but I just couldn't complete a time here for the WR. And he just taught me just a mindset of having your failures be your benchmark of what your new PB is. So let's say you're WR pace lap three, you fail the first turn, that's your new PB. All right, you beat that, you fail the second turn, that's your new PB. And literally after getting that advice, I think it was literally less than a week later and I finally set this time here. So and the rest is history from here, so. Oh man, I cannot believe it's been almost 14 years since I set my first world record, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it's still a little bit weird to see me in one of these videos now, but it had to happen at some point, I suppose, so. This was a treat for sure. So me and Zeno would eventually trade hands a lot um, in 2010 in the coming year. So maybe we'll do 2010 records at some point too. We'll see. 
So, on to Grumble Volcano. We have the No Glitch in <laughs> Oh man, I love chaos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, shout out to Chaos first off, and second off, shout outs to our old clan mate Jaws because um, <laughs> Jaws had a, a me called Eevee Smile and like this me, uh, uh, I guess style. <laughs> and then Chaos just tried to copy and just put Chaos in the name. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That is so funny. Anyway, 2008, we had Cole here. Just his fast lap was also the WR run, just coincidentally, because this category was almost not played at all in 2008, since the uh, glitch was discovered so early on. So, this is a bit more refined, and I want to highlight this. Like, Chaos really, like, started to piece together just certain components here mostly inside the um the volcano with angling the bike to be in one wheelie there um obviously today they do like a, a drifting super low trick and then they land and they re-drift and wheelie for the whole sequence there but um chaos was able to understand what he did here in this run enough where he he was ahead of his time for a bit he did this he did rock hop um he also had a world record on the, the glitch category too. So he uh, had record in all three categories if my memory serves me right. So, um, you know, Bid 154 obviously has this a fair bit of mistakes, but you know, the, the groundwork was starting to be established here in 2009 on Grumble Volcano. Um, we see uh, a lot more development in the coming like two years, like 2010, 2011 here in particular for uh, Grumble driving. But uh, shout out to Chaos though for um, really pushing it here. I remember being in many time trial calls of Chaos back in the day, and he he just loved to grumble so much. So I remember a lot of our grinds, and I was doing my track, and my friends doing their other tracks, and uh, Chaos is doing grumble a lot. So it's really cool to see. So of course now we have uh, Nayaki here, the, the the goat. Who else would it be, you know? But still, I want to get all the names from 2009 here. We had Miyaki, Inviso, shout out to Inviso, uh, King Alex as well. Uh, these were the hands that were trading uh, Grumble Glitch uh, during 2009. But eventually, uh, Miyaki was just the one that stood the test of time. And fun fact today, Miyaki has adapted to the new strats and he has a WR now. So, this is the true legacy player of all legacy players by far. So, very charming to see. Dry Dry Ruins had a lot of activity in 2009. Shout outs to British player Tim, because I believe it was British player Tim that forever changed how Dry Dry Ruins is played. You're gonna see the Shroom Strat here is what we do in current day. However, this was like a, I don't know, uh, a, a fast lap exclusive quotations there. Um, because you would purposely trek off the thing, be in the sand, go on the top, wait to the finish line, use two shrooms, you use your last shroom at the end. All right, cool. Eventually what occurred is uh, Tim did this where he shroomed up to the ledge and he did the fast lap strategy and saw that it saves just a stupid amount of time. And so I think the end of 2008 was what? A 152 low by Nova S I think. And this is almost a 149 a year later because of the new strat. So um, all the strat changes on Dry Dry Ruins in particular is really cool to see. This is by far one of my favorite tracks in all of Nairi Kart personally. I would have loved to see this be put in for the last DLC wave of Nairi Kart Deluxe, but unfortunately it didn't make the cut. Oh well. In any event though, uh, Veyu really took the torch here on DDR for quite a while. Um, the other hands that were trading uh, the record here, I saw Wyvern before. He was in the fray. Um, let's see here. Obviously, Tim started things off. Um, Brendan had a record here. Let's see. Also, Chaos was competing for a period of time as well. I remember that. Uh, and then Lee D eventually would come in 2010. But, um, 
Yeah, Chaos. I remember Chaos, Wyvern, and Veyu. These were kind of the main three that were kind of notching down DDR for a while. Um, and uh, 2009. So, still, almost a 149 in 2009. Very impressive stuff, for sure. Now, we go on to Moonview Highway. And um, we have the world record of 143.852 by Jacob. Shout out to Jacob. And this is another track where it's just unfortunate with the wr history because uh super long story short here 2012 um again cole cole the god he i guess he made like a rapid fire detection system for ghost data summer 2012 no exaggeration at least 10 to possibly 20 high profile time trialers were all called cheating their times using rapid fire including number one overall champions at the time and um uh, including eventually we found that mander was outright just holding rapid fire even during turns and stuff so you saw that 143.5 on a leaderboard that doesn't count because that that um was cheating so um once you're found cheating with that you really can't trust anything else you know um at least in that 0.5 the rapid fire wasn't like within like that ghost but he probably went to some more discreet cheating means at that time or using slow down or whatever um so now jacob retroactively got records here i believe brett retroactively got records here as well in 2009 so um shout out to both uh jacob and brett they were the two automatic kings um during this time really notching down moonview highway um and speaking of cole again cole would change this track to be a flame runner track eventually too but racing this track with automatic and spear, it was so hard to learn. Like, I think I was in the regional there at the beginning of this recording here. Um, it, this was hard to learn automatic, especially if you're not like clawing or knowing what you're doing. Um, so getting the first 143 um, during this time is also just very impressive. So uh, shout out to both Jacob and Brett for their uh, efforts here. Possibly it has to be, right? It has to be. This track, this category, is my favorite for WR history. The the battles of Brendan and Chelsea were so enchanting. It it oh my gosh. we had the first two twenty three, um, and then eventually uh, the first uh, two twenty twos coming out, and. Um, gosh just them training hands back and forth and having some months of gaps here and there and coming back i think the lowest brendan got was like a 223.2 i think and then chelsea took the reins and then Stro came back here i think Stro had like a 224.0 wr then he came back and notched it down and then chelsea came back too it was so cool um but also during 2009 uh the glitch was discovered here and um bubbles um was it Bubbles or Jazz Ahmed? I think either Bubbles or Jazz was the first three for three glitch run here. And so again, the leaderboards got botched, couldn't save the ghost data, things like that. So it's a treat we can even watch these older times that people on their Wii save these older ghost data. So thank God for that. Um, so again, this is 2009 here, folks, and a lower 222. Like there's a lot of cool new strats that are done today, but um, these these players in particular were really high of their time and I mentioned Yasha as like a underappreciated player for like not fully applying himself to the, to the entire game and I feel like I must throw Chelsea here under the mix too um, because Chelsea I don't think he really applied himself to every single track I think he randomly played DDR or not Coconut Mall maybe even DDR partially but um I, he was so ahead of his time just of driving tech and understanding the game that he, he could have gotten so many more WRs on a load of other tracks if he continued to apply himself. Um, I just want to check something here before it ends. Let's see. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm this is the only track Chelsea had a WR on. I still can't believe he got this in 2009. I stood for a year and a half this record so um it, it lasted forever so 
yeah, just uh, the Throw, Chelsea, and Brendan uh, show was extremely memorable. Shoutouts to King Alex. Fellas. BC League glitch is a thing, right? How many of you actually know that WRs here use the spear for a period of time? Some of you, not all of you. If this is your first time watching this, this is a treat for you. The reason why this was viable at the time is that getting this shroomless is so free. You wouldn't think so with this clunky bike. How in the world can you use this on BC League Glitch and get WR? But the fact that the shroomless was so easy made it really viable. So, let me get a swig of water really quick. 2009, Glitch discovered. First 3 for 3 of Flame Runner was Bubbles or Jazz. I will check that right now, actually, because it's bothering me to not remember this one. It was Bubbles. Yep, 215-206. I remember that. Then Jazz beat him afterward. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, in any event, that happened. It was in the 215s. And now we had a low 212 here. And just the fact that... I, I just love that this is a part of the BC Wii history now. Because we've had Flame Runner. It was Mock Bike. It went Spear back and forth a couple of times. Um, it was... Uh, Flame Runner again for a bit shrooming and then Daisy took over for the shroomless cut being a lot easier and more free and now in recent times we're back to Flame Runner doing the shroomless now which is far harder than the mock bike uh, method. Also can we just appreciate for a second alright Alex was like a pixel off to be fair from his run ending there but he still gets it done oh man that, that, that's epic man this is still one, one of my favorite times to watch back because it just seems so ridiculous that the spear even had wr here man it just makes no sense dude but um yeah shout out to alex bubbles jazz uh sneak as well the, there were a lot of hands that traded this in 2009 when the glitch was first discovered so um yeah this was super super hype in 2009 by far Moving on now, rounding out the Nitros, we have, of course, Rainbow Road. The first 227 with a bike happened by Jorge, a.k.a. Mario. And this is probably, no, not probably, for sure, one of the most iconic runs in the entire game's history. Um, the battles with Jorge and Reddy were so memorable. Um, and, you know, preceding them, or before... That's probably the wrong word. Anyway, um, Cole had all the innovations here. Uh, shout out to the Canadian player uh, Kenza as well, getting his first WRs here um, and trying to battle Cole uh, back and forth. And then Cole would implement the moon jump here in 2009. And I believe Kenza beat him back briefly. Then Jorge took the torch and Japanese player ready going back and forth. And eventually we land here on this 227. Um, this is so impressive for a myriad of reasons, but also for the fact that it's not using the fastest moon jump strategy with a bike. So what you do is you hop and before landing at the, the near the apex of the slope at the start, um, you shroom wheelie. And if you time it right, you kind of glide off and you're in your wheelie momentum the entire time and it's way faster, but it's a lot harder and much more precise to time that. Um, so with that in mind, for Jorge to do this 3-for-3 three three without the faster wheelie strategy is obscenely impressive. I remember being in calls of Jorge during this time too, and he was trying to do other strats that people are trying to do now if they do Rainbow Road Bike, of actually adding the wheelie in between the figure 8. Like, he was doing that in 2009. Um, just experimenting, getting like 48.8 .8 laps or something crazy with, without the, the wheelie moon jump here so um yeah both jorge and ready were so beyond their time uh for this and again i still wanted to shout out both cole and kenza for both of their uh efforts and their rifle uh history here with things uh going on um and i just wanted to check here it wasn't until uh 2010 where hizumi would be um 
uh, beating um, Jorge's time. But uh, even still, seeing a 227-2009 was just so epic for the time. So uh, shout-outs to Mario and also Ready. Hydration Brick. All right, fellas. Hope you guys are doing great. Heading now into the retros here. Let's get it. We're going to go to Peach Beach. And 2009 was also a lot of fun. We had uh, the Gosser, um, old Star Dashers clanmate of mine. Shout out to Deg. I don't know if you still watch Mario Kart at this point. But if, if you do, shout out to you, man. Um, we had the Gosser. I think Veyu had this here. Did Jaws have record? I think Jaws had record here too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think Dutch player Vincent only had this in 2008, I want to say. Let me check. Hope you guys like these reaction videos in more of like a podcasty way too. Just kind of going off the top here. Um, let's see. Yeah, man, I forgot Zeno had this too. Oh my gosh. Wow, man. A lot of notable players had Peach Beach, dude. Oh my gosh. So yes, Vincent did have a record in 2009, the 462. I remember that one. Cole had it. Uh, Finnish player Alex, shout out to Finnish player Alex as well. I remember that too. Yep. Then we had the Gosser here. And then it was Veyu Ve tied this exact time here, the 347. I knew Veyu had this at least once or twice before Cole shot this down to a 112. But I remember Deg was trying so hard for so long here. And he finally pulled through and it was so hype. I remember we had the, the old MIRC chats back in the day. And um, I remember everyone popping off for the Gosser here. So uh, very charming to watch this back. So shout out to you, the Gosser, for sure. The legend, Omega. I feel like if you hear Yoshi Falls and Mary Kirby, you almost just think of Omega right away for good reason. Um, this dude w w was just a beyond the beast for the entire time that he played. And... Um, he was just the overwhelming force for forever on Yoshi Falls. Um, this wasn't the year that he got the 59 flat, uh, but pretty close to it. I mean, 138, close enough, I guess, you know? Um, it's just so... Man, like, this track and LC are the two most, like, unchanged tracks compared to everything else in the game. Uh, at least on this track, they do the MT at the start now, and number two on LC, they do the wheelie shroom now. But apart from that, man, like, this is mostly unchanged for almost the entire game's history. This this track has the least WRs in the whole 15-year timeline, FYI. In fact, it's only 30-something, man. It's, it's, so, it's so little. Let's see. It's, uh... Yeah, it's 42. Uh, same thing. Only 42 t total WRs in 15 years? That's less than three records a year, dude. Like, that's unheard of, man. That, that's crazy. Uh, but uh, I have to give all the names a shout out for GV2 because GV2 was so hype. So hype in 2009, man. We had Jimbo, Keone, we had Sro, Japanese player Mouse, um, and then Kenny. So many hands um, traded on this track, and when this shroom strat was discovered, uh, it was just a mad dash for um, this being lower beyond the 53 uh, second, you know, sub 54. I mean, um, and this really harbored the beginnings of like using soft drifting, chain drifting, popping the wheelie in the first turn, um, a lot of like the rev refinement of pure driving tech surprisingly started to happen here in 2009. Um, so yeah, shout out to Kenny, Sro, Keone, Jimbo, Mouse, all of them. This track was super hype in 2009 and it continued also in 2010. Now you heard the um, the player, uh, Canadian player Kenza on Rainbow Road. He also pulled through on Raceway, so shout out to Kenza. Um, <clears throat> Kenza grinded for so long on both tracks, and it was so cool to see him finally pull through on both Raceway and Rainbow Road. Um, this was before the time where you actually do the little S-Bend MT after the Shroom. 
And so it's just really charming still to see you go up on the ramp um, in 2009. But at least in 2009, we had the uh, double pipe tricks. And um, I may have been Brendan was the first one that did it in WR runs. Because initially, you would do it off the, the left side and then go to the right side. And then eventually you did it on the right side on both on both tricks. Um, so we had Brendan, Kenza. I don't think Zane Z Royal had the record yet in 2009. Let me see. Let me go back uh, as I drink some water. Man, Veyu had this. Flame had it as well. I remember Flame having this too. FE9 low, I have all I remember him too. Unreal. Oh my gosh, man. This traded hands quite a bit in 2009. Oh, very memorable. Very, very memorable. Um, I think it's in 2010 when we did the S Bend MT after the Shroom, where both myself and American Player Doom changed this track. We were doing just alternate strats for fun, just doing random stuff on other tracks. And eventually we were seeing we we're getting WR splits with skipping the ramp. The rest is history, but that didn't happen until 2010. Um, in any event, though, shout out to Kenza, man. Kenza had such a supreme grind set um, back in 2009. I, I really admired um, how hard Kenza would grind for his time, so shout out to Kenza, man, for sure. Um, here we go now, Banana Cup. We have Sherbet Land, uh, not glitched yet at this point. And um, we had the Battles of Flame. Um, and Tyrera on uh, Shy Guy Beach, and then we had uh, Ken and Flame on uh, Sherbet Land. Um, and I think also Alvin had this in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Let's consult this. Yes, also shout out to Zanz as well. The GOAT Zanz, American player Zanz. Ken, Flame. Yeah, Alvin had the first 204 here. I, I knew I was remembering something there. Yep. Oh man, the fact that this was a 204 in 2009, very impressive, first off. Um, I don't think it was until 2011, I think, where you would do like the rocking back and forth to like cut more of the crack turns off. Um, so you would just kind of like turn and pray into a corner and hopefully you don't fall off, you know? Um, it's just, oh my gosh, I just can't believe they're doing no wheelies in the cave, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, but even still, I hope some of you guys are watching this. If you weren't around from 2008, you at least watch a 2008 reaction because the driving for all these tracks is multiple levels up from the end of 2008, clearly. Um, I think it was from 2008 to 2012, if you look back to back at the end of each year, the the standards of driving and the techniques and the refinement was such stark uh, changes and improvements. Uh, but after 2012, 2013, it kind of looks the same for most of it. Um, but the biggest visual differences definitely came from the first couple of years. Um, but yes, the battles here were quite memorable. Um, I remember Flame was trying to get all the world records in the Banana Cup at the time. So you're going to see Flame's name a couple more times here as well. Shout out to Flame and also to Ken as well. Uh, water break. Give me a second here. This time is so memorable. 122.69 by Flame. Flame and Tyrera had their epic battles in 2009. And this time... Is, it's just so strong for the strats that were used. Um, I did a little competition um, a couple years ago where you would kind of mimic the old WR strats and try and get the best time. And um, no one could beat Flame's time when we tried it, which was really funny. Um, th this was just so strong. And the thing is, is that with the water receding and going on the beach and everything, and the beach transitions of the Magic Cruiser is very tricky. There's a lot of things that are going on here that I just can't fit into a, a minute abridged explanation here. Regardless of what I can say, 
is eventually um, this record would go to Spear, and it'll go immediately back to Magic Cruiser because the Spear was doing the low hop on the pink ramp, and Magi said, "All right, I'm gonna do that too." So they did, and so this this got down to like a 122 point low three, I believe, by Shima. And then I think it was Rom that got a 122-198 that forever changed this to Spear permanently. Um, but still, Tyrera and Flame, the battles here were amazing. And Flame came out on top in 2009. So w what a wicked, beautiful, and crazy and craft run for the time. So, so impressive. We're going to see Flame's name again here as well. Delfino Square as well. So this got to sub 206 in 2009. I believe Japanese player Uki, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, apologies. Um, also Japanese player Kuma-san, shout out to him as well. He was more of an online player, but I think he also had Delfino Square di during 2009. Um, if not, he was very high on the charts. Um, but yeah, this was mostly an Uki in the flame battle exchange um, in 2009 um, and so for perspective uh, entering 09 the record was a 206.4 and now it's a 205.7 and um, I think at this point here um, you're trying to just do the cycles on the bridge a little bit better where if you drive very fast on lap one naturally your lap will get faster because the bridge ramp angle on lap one is lower so you can get a faster lap time lap two uh at any pace this pace and below the the ramp is completely at its apex so you can only just like do like a drift trick off it and optimize it that way but um they're really trying this to really optimize their lap ones just to cut off time there apart from that i mean obviously people were still spamming their d-pads for getting chain wheelies at the time um but as you can see, still a lot of older, outdated driving tech with, um, it's called OA drifting, where you literally just hop and drift at the same time. A lot of that still. But um, there is some, some delayed drifting in here. I see it here watching Flames Time. But um, yeah, I mean, the dock uh, cut and world record runs when it come until 2021, I want to say. Yeah, I think 2021 sounds about right. Yeah, But uh, even still, uh, Flame was on his mission to have four for four Banana Cup uh, do, uh, world records and be the first one to ever have a WR in the entire cup in the trap and in, in the game, uh, rather. He got close. He got three for four. But uh, Waluigi Stadium was the big barrier for him, unfortunately. Uh, for good reason, though. Because uh, this track is insane. Uh, Totom uh, had the record at the end of 2009. Um, we have Rocky Light, Totom, Ender. Was Tatsuya during this time too? I'm kind of curious. Let's take a look here. Let's see. Yes. Ender, Tatsuya, Rocky, and Totom. I was right on all of them. Yep. So... Um, there's no turn skips yet, but two things in particular, I would say are a bigger contrast to 2008. They got way better at doing the wheel, the mini wheelies there on the zipper midway through the lap. Um, they, Totem started doing like a mini drift trick there, uh, where, uh, I guess post 2009, people really saw that drifting off of most ramps where it's generally faster. Um... And they got better at doing the wall bounce there too with, with the down trick for like preserving all that momentum. And also the upward um, mound turn there, actually underrated turn, but that's very hard to do. Um, you can easily just unhook and just fly off there. Um, but they got really good at doing all the smaller things on this track. Um, and so it was 2010 where on this turn over here, you see how they're doing only the, the, the lower horizontal zipper of that. In 2010 and onward, they would drift into the meteor part as in like gain the whole chunk, both um, zippers there. Um, and you can cut way more of the turn off. You could save so much more time. 
Uh, I think legit from this strat here to that strat um, is what? 0.3 a lap at least? Probably? I'm probably lowballing that one. Probably. In any event, though, um, with these strats, really, really impressive time. And getting a 36 second lap with that in 2009, that's just so sick. Oh my gosh. Shout out to all the fellas here on the Waluigi Stadium. All right, future end meet here. Uh, back to splice this run in. Um, I had to manually record a couple of these uh, runs, as you guys have noticed at this point. Uh, super huge shout outs to Mindscarf for really pioneering uh, world record high tier quality recordings, preserving history uh, way back in the day, as well as Manner for what he did too for the time. Um, but here we are, Desert Hills. And this was really um, the Alex and Veyu show for a while. And also Ryan did come back uh, eventually later on in 2009. Um, but still the first 135 happened here. And honestly, you know, I think both Alex and Veyu were really mostly known for their Desert Hills accolades for a while in 2009. And Alex too for his Grumble Volcano um, uh, glitch runs. But even still, uh, this is really one of the hardest spear races to really do. Um, seems like there's a lot of gentle curves and a lot of straights here, but uh, please believe me. Um, when you're landing the nose dive here with the spear, very difficult. Uh, the shroom is quite tricky, and just maneuvering when you're landing down in that S bend at the end um, is really quite tricky. And negotiating your way around the uh, the Pudaboo uh, fireballs at the end is really annoying for sure. But um, yeah, this was still very memorable with the battles here. Uh, this wouldn't be a Flame Runner track until 2010. Um, I wonder what was Veyu's last time here, I wonder. Yeah, so Veyu got a 135.885, but then he wouldn't contend here anymore after that one. He kind of threw in a towel after that. But um, Alex continued taking the torch for quite a while here, uh, including this run. So uh, shout out to Alex. Uh, always trying to pioneer and get his hands into a lot of different tracks and categories and such. But uh, yeah, that is Desert Hills. Shoutouts now to my um, old clanmate and one of my best friends in the community here. Uh, Dylan, a.k.a. Choi, a.k.a. BC3King. And here we have the shortcut run. And this traded hands with uh, Choi, Doom, Bubbles. I think Veyu was him. No, no, no. I think Veyu was 2010. I think Veyu was the one that beat this run in particular, I want to say. Not no shortcut. Hold on. Give me a second here. Uh, no, actually. Wow. Veyu had a low two minute in 2009. Wow. And then Bubbles was the first 159. Uh, Veyu would beat this run in 2010, but um, in any event though, shout out to Choi, man. Literally won my day ones out here, dude. Oh my gosh. Literally trading hands with uh, Choi, Doom, and Bubbles was so memorable. You're going to see on lap three, um, the, the flop that goes down. Um, Choi was the first one in a world record run to beat that under it on lap three, which is super epic. Um, and... Bubbles would use a marker ghost in 2009 and kind of started to pioneer um, the, 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 I guess, the innovation of using the what the game has to our advantage. So making like a marker ghost to our advantage for learning hard strats. Um, because again, at the time, there's no dolphin emulator. There's no save states. There's no efficient practicing, all these things. So um, yeah, so that was interesting too. There was a Flame Runner world record, um, I, th I think also by Dylan too, by, by Choi, uh, back during this time. Um, still though, um, this was discovered, the new uh, bigger shortcut here, but with Funky Kong, the cut was a lot harder, so it was back to Daisy. But um, 2009, Choi got his first world records, I got my first world records, uh, Doom had some in 2008 as well, but even still. Uh, my, my main core did really well in 2009, so this makes me very happy to see for sure, 100%. So uh, shout out to you, Dylan, for sure. Um, here we are to No Shortcut uh, by Bubbles. Uh, old run in 2009. Um, and also, as I'm recording this too, I realized that I missed having uh, Desert Hills in this. So 
Uh, this is future and me's problem here to kind of splice that one in. Um, I was kind of scratching my head when I saw BC3 to start for the shortcut category. Um, I'm like, am, am I like missing a track in here? Any event though, um, I'm happy that Bubbles was starting to do some uh, no shortcut driving uh, in 2009. Um, Cause I, I don't think no shortcut, no glitch driving was really popularized until at least like 2010 or so, I would say. Um, cause again, cause the whole leaderboard changes and everything. Um, cause it, let me just summarize it nicely. So not only does Nintendo, did they not make split charts? You can only have 32 ghosts saved on a license as well. Um, and eventually I think you would just lose some of the ghost data that was there. So it was just very hard just to kind of keep the runs you were doing and also, um, keep like your top five preserved on your license too. Um, Cause I remember um, it was so tilting to like make a really good uh, no glitch run or almost like a world record run, but you did it on your glitch license. And so it wouldn't save. There is no way of getting it back. That's one of the biggest problems as well. Um, that's why I like CTGP, the ghost leaderboard, the database, saving all your runs on your SD card is, is so impressive and so critical for like just maintaining our runs and our history and everything else. So time trialing a modern day is, is a far better experience for sure. And honestly, Bubbles is freaking cooking here in lap three with these lows, dude. Oh my gosh, man. Jeez. But um, yeah, we have to give a lot of respect to Bubbles because Bubbles was a former number one overall time trialer. Um, he eventually kind of just went under the radar and just didn't want to do TTs anymore. And then I eventually took the number one title overall from Bubbles. But Bubbles was so hard to beat for the title. Like, Bubbles was so good at literally everything. It was such a, a um, big rewarding time period to be um, versing him and also being a clanmate with him. So, uh, shout out to Bubbles, man. Uh, if you're watching this, I appreciate you, dude. Um, Going on now to DK Jungle Parkway. This is again, pre-glitch era for most of these tracks here. And we had Yasha, we had Veyu. I think Brendan was in the mix. I think Russo X had a random record here as well. Um, what can I not say about Parkway, man? Like this is like one of the most like, it's gonna be odd to say it, but almost like just calming therapeutic daisy tracks to play. I feel like just all the turns are kind of gradual. It's not very aggressive. It's just soothing the play, but then it's tilting for this part right here. This shroom is just so stupid, dude. I I, I don't know what to say, man. Like it, from 2008 to almost 2024, not much has changed with our, our gripes and our disdain for this shroom over here. Um, sure, the stream strat has changed now, but even still, it's just very annoying. But still, um, mid-212-2009, extremely impressive. Um, I, I was always so hyped to see when Veyu beat Yasha, Yasha beat Veyu, da 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 um, And just both players were so good at this track. Um, and these players in particular, they really understood the shrew most of all. Um, not only is her driving here world class, obviously for the time period, but um, your run is made or broken on the shroom. Like you can literally lose a categorical, just crap ton of time here. Um, if your shroom is not good, if you delay it, get slowed down in the mud, da, 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 you're going to the wall, failing your runs or whatever. The, the thing to do here is literally right before you're on the border of the mud, you time your shroom right there before you cut mud and start dropping your speed. You shroom there and you hard commit to turning left on this thing and you hope you don't hit the wall. And you glide in one straight line and you make that shroom. And both Yasha and Veyu, they understood that to, understood that to a T in particular during that time, so. Um, those battles were so memorable between the two. So uh, shout out to all of you guys that I uh, mentioned here for Parkway. Um, here we go now to GCN Mario Circuit. One of my favorite T tiers of all time, Japanese player Alves. And um, no, 
both him and Tim here, the battles here were very memorable. Um, I think even Tim tried doing like a low hop on the mounds here, either in 2009 or 2010. Oh my God. So, oh my gosh, this is a super, super old strat to would do still. I, I thought we did a double MT in 09, I guess not. Wow. That just loses so much time. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I remember too, so 2009, 2008, I was such a confused Mario Kart Wii player where like, I was trying like, to spam my trick on my controller and no matter what I was doing, I could not get two tricks on the mound and I'm like, why man, you know? Um, it was like some insider secrets, dude, where you have to hop and trick at the same time, they get the first trick right there. And if you time it well like that, you get the fast double. And that saves a lot of time, clearly. So I remember just learning that, and that was just so memorable for the time. Um, so both Alice and Tim were really, really ahead of their time on this track. I believe these were the two main contenders back in 2009. My memory serves me right. Um, yeah, it was legit. The, the uh, uh, yeah. Wow, 2009 was entirely the Alf show. It wasn't until 2010 where Tim would get it done. Even still, Alves was really ahead of his time. He would have more accolades here in 2010 and on another track upcoming. But that concludes GCN Mary Circuit. Now, fellas, we go to the last cup here. I know, sad, but still got four more tracks to go. Hope you guys are enjoying this video here. It's good to be back. Mario Circuit 3, we had Jimbo, I think Unreal was still during this time, I believe MVT was still during this time, I think Nobuo also had this during this time, let's consult MKWRS.com, shall we? Man, Tatsuya was here too, man, wow, so many older players I forget their entire time sheet. Unreal, Tatsuya, Jimbo. Wow, Brendan had a, I forgot a 715. Oh my God, how did I forget that, man? Oh my God. Yeah, so Nobu had a record too in 2009. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Th this traded hands so many times in 2009. And still a 118.4 in 2009 is really, like really obscene. Like most players today, they will still struggle to beat this time with like updated, just pure driving tech. Um, the, this run is just so impressive. Jimbo, shout out to Jimbo, man. Like both him, he on MC3 and GB2, he really knew what he was doing on both of these tracks. So shout out to Jimbo and also all the other players I mentioned before as well. Um, I, man, I, I didn't realize he got this good of a time in 2009. It, it, it's a real treat to kind of look back on these times and kind of remember what's going on, you know? Um, very memorable for sure. Peach Gardens, how memorable was this? So Bubbles, he got this time here. And I believe his lap three was massive. So at least during 2009, um, I believe it was Jaws trading hands with Xeno for a bit. Um, and then Jaws kind of improving on his own for a period of time. And then Bubbles came around. Um, let me see in particular here. Let me just consult this. And also uh, uh, Dutch player Vincent also was here for a period of time. Um, I believe it was Xeno who changed the route and the maze with the spear. From the left hand side to the right hand side of it. Um, one thing you may notice though, did you notice how that stream was different than lap one? Lap one, Bubbles didn't do a wheelie shroom and hop. He hopped and then shroomed. Small detail. However, doing it the former way loses a crap load of time. Um, to the point where when you do the wheelie shroom all three laps, you save this so much time off the bat just, just doing that. Um, this is also pre doing the Superman wheelie at the end all three laps. Um, but I believe Bubbles lap three here was actually a 39 lap. And then it was kind of like a question mark, like, 
can the 159 happen? Possibly, you know? Um, this is still such a massive time. I, I don't think, did Jaws beat this back? No, he didn't. It was Brett. So Brett turned this to be automatic for a period of time a after Bubbles' time here. Uh, Jaws never got the record back again. This is also before you would do a double MT in the, on the S-Ben and the Mole Trail um, with Spear. Was this still a 39 lap? Even with that ending? Wow, it was! Oh my god! Dude, if he had a better alignment at the end, that could have been near a 39.8 in 2009. Oh my gosh, dude. Jeez. Whew. Man, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. Shout out to Bubble Suit and Jaws and all the others, man. Oh, so memorable. Um, DK Mountain was incredible. We had Nave for the longest time. And then I believe it was Nobuo who innovated the mountain here. So previously you would just go like in one street wheelie right next, yeah, like this, right? Um, but it was Nobuo who would do one giant wheelie like hooking the corner of the, the mountain where it was one continuous wheelie and you articulate your wheelie back to where you rechain your wheelie and you re-angle yourself at the same time. Um, and that further revolutionized his track uh, forever. Um, with that in mind, I think, I guess 2009 Nobuo didn't do that yet since we're still using this older strat here. Um, but Alves had his start on GC and Mario Circuit and then he picked up DK Mountain as his second WR track. And a lot of these older Japanese T tiers would have like their own like Japanese blog and stuff on a site called fc2.com. And so I followed like all of them back in the day and Alice was really cool. He put like his splits, his paces. He was really into baseball, random fun facts. He was talking about baseball a lot too. Um, oh, this is just so charming. Oh my gosh, I've said that word a lot, but this is really, it, it encapsulates what I'm feeling though. Like I'm telling you like 2009, Mary Kurt Reed, TT scene, WR scene was just so cool. So many just memorable faces and battles and new things discovered. And it, it, it was just such a serene time. Uh, again, I am heavily biased here for pretty much almost peaking in 2009, 2010 and then this era, but still like uh, the player base was top notch. Personalities were great. Um, it was just a, a good mesh at the right time. Let's put it that way. So um, still dude, low 207. Uh, almost 206 with uh, the old mountain strat. That's really good to me, you know? So no longer doing like a double hop on the, the shortcut at the end, just doing a single hop, stuff like that. So uh, good stuff all around for sure. So Now we got to the last track here, closing out the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I'll probably do 2010 next if you guys enjoyed this one. So definitely toss one of these if you don't mind. Um, what can I say, man? 2009 RBC was also really crazy. Um, we had the first 232. I believe Brendan changed the strat here to do the shroom um, that you're gonna see here after the, the staircase. Um, and he beat uh, Meguru's legendary 233041. They used the old strat at the beginning of the track uh, with Funky Kong. And it's actually really funny just to watch Daisy do like the Funky Kong strat today, just delaying it that that long, you know? Um, so Brendan got that. Meguru didn't come back until a couple years later. Um, Russo X had this. Nobuo had this. I think Brendan only got that first 232. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. I, I think he kind of checked that after that, I think. Um... Yeah, so 2009 was really, apart from Brendan doing this, um, it was Russo X and Nobuo kind of notching it down. I remember this, Nobuo notched the time down by literally 0.4. From a 232.8 to a 0.4, that was a humongous jump. And then Russo's uh, 0.442 playing right now lasted quite a bit. Um, and then in 2010, uh, Cole got the record here and he switched it back to a Flame Runner track. Um, because fun fact, this shroom strategy here was considered too hard with Funky Flame for the time period because not a lot of players could actually handle the bike shrooming there. It's super simple now, but it was just so difficult for the time. Um, 
And so he improved that by a lot in 2010. Um, one thing that was almost not applicable apart from GV2 in here was 2009 was the time where spin drifting was discovered by American player Doom. Uh, even Japanese tutorials back in the day would call a spin drift a Doom drift because Doom discovered the, the tech in the game. And so that was spin drifting was applicable on GV2 since Doom discovered spin drifting on GV2. But then spin drifting was applied to this track at the end because doing the ending last turn with an OA drift is cursed, is horrible, you would feel runs, it was god awful. So, um,. A lot of progress was made here in 2009, but fellas, that's all for me for today. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, hopefully going to be putting out some more videos sometime soon. But uh, I hope you guys continue to watch and enjoy these trips down memory lane for WR reactions. I'm a vessel of uh, all the things that occurred back in the day. And um, yeah, just uh, more to come. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching and see you guys in the next one. Peace.